So let's dive right into the conversation about how together we can find ways to be more efficient, more productive, and most importantly, more innovative. And there's no better place for us to start that conversation than with the introduction of a new version of LabVIEW. Please welcome from LabVIEW R&D, Adam Bordelon and Brady Dugan. Good morning, guys. Thanks, John. Today, we're happy to announce LabVIEW 2009. This marks our fifth version of LabVIEW in five years. And if you haven't figured it out by now, we're going to be releasing a new version of LabVIEW every year. This helps us respond to your feedback sooner. But most of all, it means you always have access to the latest features and cutting edge technology. And we've got a lot of exciting new features in LabVIEW 2009, including recursion, data value references, new math plots, a probe watch window, and much, much more. We'll take you through a few of these new features now, starting with my personal favorite, a feature I worked on with the rest of the LabVIEW multi-core team. You've heard us talk a lot about multi-core in recent years, and it continues to be a difficult but important problem. Processor speeds have hit a wall, and now developers must learn to leverage parallel computing in order to solve increasingly complex problems. At Berkeley, researchers have identified 13 parallel motifs that capture the computational patterns at the heart of modern scientific applications. Here we see an example of the in-body methods motif. We've got two bodies, and the formula is required to calculate their force vectors as a result of the gravitational pull they exert on each other. This seems fairly simple, but Consider the complexity of performing the same operation on thousands of bodies, each of which experiences a force as a result of thousands of other bodies, as we see here on our front panel, visualized in a 3D picture control. Now, Adam, that sounds like an impressive number of computations, a pretty complex problem, but to be honest, that looks a little slow. Now, how many cores do you have on your machine? Actually, John, we've got a 16-core machine back here, but I haven't parallelized the code yet, so we're only utilizing about 10% of the CPU. So what can we do to speed it up? As you know, one of the benefits of LabVIEW is that we can use parallel loops to create concurrent tasks that will run simultaneously on multiple cores. When I was optimizing this code for my quad-core desktop, I went ahead and rewrote it to split the data set four ways and recombine the results afterwards. This required copying the loop four times and coding the logic to distribute the data evenly. So let's go back and run this application using the four-way version. And we see we're getting three and a half to four x speed up and using about 25% of the CPU now. Well, Adam, I mean, the performance looks better, but to be honest, your code's looking a little messy. I mean, I guess to get the 12 additional cores, you just have to keep adding 12 more loops? Actually, John, LabVIEW 2009 lets us automatically scale this operation across all the processors available on our system, thanks to the new parallel for loop feature. Let's go back to the original code, and I'll show you how it works. So instead of splitting the data and copying the code, just right-click on the for loop, select Configure Iteration Parallelism. In this dialog, we configure the number of parallel loop instances that LabVIEW will create. Since we want to be able to utilize up to 16 cores, we'll set it to 16. So now let's go back and run the application using the parallel for loop version. Oh yeah, much better. Now we're getting better than 10x speed up. So Adam, that looks great. And I guess the key point is with the new parallel for loop, no changes to your original code. That's right. And this is becoming increasingly important as the number of cores on system con systems continues to grow. In addition to keeping our application simple, we can also programmatically determine the number of cores available, which helps LabVIEW make more intelligent use of our system resources. That's very nice. Good job. Thank you. Hey, John, if you don't mind, I recently saw an example up on the NI community that can make this demo a little bit cooler. That's just like you R&D guys, wanting to change the demo here on stage. <laughs> can you make it quick? You bet. I'll, I'll make it quick. Um, I was trying to search for a better visualization for the demo when I found this snippet of code online that would automatically rotate the 3D graph for me. So let me just go ahead and add this code into my application. I'll just drag it over here and wire it up real quick. And let's get back and run that app. 
Okay, wait a minute, Brady. I, I'm not sure if we caught that. Did you just take an image from a web document, drag it into the LabVIEW environment where you could immediately edit it and run it? How'd you do that? That's right, John. So this is one of the new features in LabVIEW 2009. VI snippets are an easy way to share and reuse code. LabVIEW can embed all the VI information into a standard ping image, and that allows us to just literally drag it into our block diagram and have it turn into editable and, editable and runnable code. Now, <laughs> all right, Brady, they're impressed, but you know, I'm looking at your code here and it's kind of messy. How about you use that block diagram cleanup tool we introduced last year with 8.6? Right, John. Uh, well, we actually had feedback on the block diagram cleanup tool since 8.6, and users were telling us that they didn't necessarily want us to clean up their entire diagram every, every time they wanted to change just a portion of it. As you can see here in my diagram, the top part looks pretty good, and I really just have the messy part at the bottom that I want to change. So let me just select this code real quick and hit the block diagram cleanup tool. <laughs> All right. So you see it, it only uh, cleaned up the portion of the diagram that I selected, as well as things like my wire comments traveled with their wires throughout the cleanup operation. All right, you're doing a good job. You're impressing <laughs> them, but Brady, I'm going to keep pushing you. I mean, all this work on your uh, program, and you don't even have a custom icon. What's going on? All right, well, I was hoping you were going to say something about it here. Let me just go ahead and add an icon to this sub VI real quick. Oh, just a second. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> There we go. All right. Well, what you're going to see here right off the bat is that this is not the old icon editor. I mean, we've had a ton of feedback on the old one over the years, and well, when you sum it all up in a word, it sucked. So <laughs> <laughs> we've added a lot of modern capabilities into the new version. Why don't I just take you on a quick tour here and build an icon for this sub VI? I'm going to start by using a custom template that I've been using across the rest of my project. I'm going to add in a couple of lines of text and a pre-composed glyph from the, that I've imported from the ni.com icon library. Then just let me select one of the layers here and I'll clean it up a little bit. And there we go. A much easier way to create a professional looking icon. Very nice. Well, good job, guys. Thank you very much. Okay.